welcome to the brand new Aalto Acoustics Lab YouTube channel. My name is Alexi Öyr and here is Nils Maie Kalen. Hi Alexi and hi everyone. So as a first video for our channel, we thought it would be nice to give you a short tour of our lab. Earlier this year I recorded such a tour together with Professor Tapio Loki and during the following video you will be able to see some of our facilities and in the end you can listen to a reproduced sound from some of the world's greatest concert halls. During the video you will hear the sound through these ears here. So this is a dummy head which has one microphone in each ear and if you wear headphones you will be able to experience the spatial sound uh, in a very nice way. Great! And in the video description there is a link where you can find all of the clips from this video as well as a virtual reality tour of the whole lab. And if you want to see more videos like this one and you like it, please subscribe to the channel. Let's go! Let's go! Welcome to the big Anekoi room in Aalto Acoustics lab. This is actually the room is built in in 60s, so it's a concrete big block where there is a room inside, so it's it's room in a room construction. And now the veggies were just uh, renovated like one year ago. So we have dimensions here about eight meters uh, between the veggies, so it's it's relatively big, and it's it's also in in the ceiling and also lower there. You will see later on in the video that that it's it's full in in its direction anechoic. And we can actually go down to 50 hertz with these wedges. There is actually not so long wedges, but then there is also like the resonator behind. So it should, it, it is anechoic down to 50 hertz. Yeah, and it's not only anechoic, but it's also very well isolated. So in fact, minus 2 dB uh, A-weighted sound pressure level was measured here. Um, and with that, it's uh, the quietest place in Finland, as they say. So all the noise you're hearing is just from the from the dummy head. Yeah, now unfortunately you don't hear this minus minus two dB because I think the noise of the head is, is something like twenty dB or something, at least. Okay, and then then what 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 they are doing in these kind of rooms? We are measuring many things: loudspeakers, instruments, whatever measurements we need. So this is a free field condition. And nice demo is also that that, that when you when I turn around like this. Then you should hear my uh, the directivity of the human head. So now when I'm speaking, you you don't hear it so loud, and maybe it's low pass. Okay, the mask low pass also. But when I I'm speaking here, and then also the distance attenuation is that if if I'm co coming closer to you, you should hear it it louder. And then I if I go more far away, then then it's it's not so loud because there is no reverberation, which is add it there, it's only the direct sound that you are hearing and then when I turn the directivity of he head makes that, that you don't hear the high frequencies so well but still you of course you can hear the speech because there's a lot of low frequencies which are also radiated uh, the back of my head yeah now we can do one more small experiment and hear how a balloon pop sounds without any room, any reverberation I hope it will work So it's extremely short, and it's actually not really loud. I don't know how how this now comes to the to you, but it's it's actually quite silent. And the reason is that it's it's so short in time that 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 the loudness integration in our hearing is about 100 milliseconds, and so there is it's, it's so short peak that we don't hear it so loud as we hear it it in the corridor, uh, because in the corridor it's 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 exciting the space and the space is reverbing, and then you have like more time also to integrate all the loudness together. But okay, this is this is this room, so uh, we will shoot a, a little bit more. Like you, you can hear, he see something. Maybe Nils can open the door, so you can you okay. can see the door. The door is quite amazing. Uh, this is the thickness of the door. As you can see, it's it's also wedges in the door and, and so on.
Okay, welcome to the variable acoustics room. So this used to be a reverberation chamber, uh, so concrete block where there was a really long reverberation. But uh, last year we installed this kind of variable acoustic panels. You can see all the dark panels here. Uh, <coughs> probably you can see also a little bit that there is uh, small openings. So now now all the panels are open, and then this is quite dry the room. As you can hear, there is not much reverberation. But then with this automatic system, I can actually close all the panels. And now I close them. So you hear a lot of noise. Because now the panels are closing. Uh, and then all these, openings, all these openings are closed. And now you hear actually the reverberation also much more. So there is now, now it's, it's much more reverberant about 1.7 seconds or something. Uh, a relatively small room, but quite long reverb. And, and now I open and close. Oh, oh, I closed all the panels. We have 55 of these panels, and we can actually individually control them with this uh, remote control system. So you can do also so that you you probably open like one wall only, and then then or oh, you open only the ceiling, and all the others are reverberant. So what is this used for? We, are, we have done a lot of measurements here with the different conditions because now it's nice that the geometry is not changing but you can change the, the absorption material the, the, the amount of absorption material on the on the walls and then you have like different room of the conditions and you can do a lot of measurements here the, the other idea is also that, that we have here uh, uh, a spatial sound reproduction system and then uh, with that one we can listen different algorithms, spatial reproduction algorithms in different room of the conditions. So you can have like a dry room or you can have a more reverent room and listen that that what the codec for example is doing for, for a little bit more reverent conditions. Should we try this again? I yes, think here should be more fun than in the adipoid chamber. Okay, it was exactly the si same size as balloon same size of balloon and you heard that it was much louder here because we have a lot of reverberation but i will now open the, the, the walls again or the panels so that because it's, it's better to speak when there is less reverb okay now they are they are open and now the reverberation is gone because then from the openings the sound can enter to the panels and there is actually almost like 10 centimeters of mineral wool in these panels so so now you basically have mineral wool everywhere also in the ceiling okay now we are in our listening room this is a standard listening room so it's it's built on, on iso standard i don't recall the number uh, but it's it's kind of a standard living room so reasonable size room where you have some diffusers on the on the side walls and then also the back wall is, is, is full of diffuser behind you and here we have now we have nine uh, loudspeakers so it's kind of 9.1 here's the subwoofer woofer. we have this large genlex then we have also four in the ceiling so here you can do standard test for 5.1 7.1 9.1 and whatsoever uh, this is also room in a room concept built so it's it's also isolated from the rest of the building so that it's, it's really silent here also really silent uh, cooling system and so on so so this is really good for for doing like standard listening tests yeah actually right now we even have one of our optitrack systems set up here so um, we are also doing tests with that tracking the listener position um, and then yeah that's nice to have such a room for for a real virtual test as well. Uh, and then I think now we should just listen to some music in here, which is the best thing you could do here. Uh, it's actually, and, and I think I have just a 5.1 recording that I quite like um, by the Flaming Lips. We play it. Yes. Okay, 
hello, welcome to our, our listening boots. So we have three of these kind of, of listening boots, so isolated small boots, uh, really small rooms uh, where you can do basically headphone listening studies. So there is a good ventilation and, and isolated and then there's the screen which is outside the room and but you have the keyboard and, and the mouse here and then you can do headphone studies so in the really silent conditions and, and we have the same headphones the same gear in all of the, the all of the three rooms or the small boxes so you can run three uh, subjects at the same time uh, and this is the space which is under the, the small anechoic room so this is the leftover space which we actually occupied with these special made boots and this is a really nice facility the, you can calibrate the headphones and, and all all this kind of stuff to, to do like really good and nice tests on hearing we are doing on some uh, spatial sound with headphone listening and then also hearing related studies hi okay this is Vilska our uh, multi-channel uh, playback room you will see 45 Genelec 1 loudspeakers in here actually in the moment there are even some extra ones in the front um, and this is also an anechoic environment so there's absorb absorbing material behind these grids we use this room to test spatial audio algorithms um, the new ones and also especially to reproduce the acoustics of, of different spaces like Tapio has been doing <laughs> with uh, the concert halls Yes, I play a, a short demo to you. So these are the concert halls that we have measured with the loudspeaker orchestra. So there, there's like uh, 32 loudspeakers on stage and then we have a spatial impulse responses from all of these from different concert halls and then we actually do the sound processing and then the convolution with the anechoic music later on which enables us here to jump from hall to hall while, while I'm playing. Thank you. 